Bitcoin price is hanging on by a thread, with many waiting and hoping to be able to buy Bitcoin in the low 50k range. See, I'm waiting and I'm hoping that Bitcoin gets down to $51,000, $52,000 right around here. I've seen some people say I'm not buying until Bitcoin gets in the $40,000 range. Like, what do you think? What's your plan for this market? The real question is, does the almost 900,140,000 Bitcoin in sell pressure from Mt. Gox, how big of a deal is this? How big of an effect will this have on Bitcoin's price? Could we see Bitcoin hit the $40,000 range? Here, insider John Glover, who's the chief investment officer at Ledin, shares his insight on the whole Mt. Gox situation. Listen. The market is bracing for the now defunct exchange Mt. Gox to start distributing as many as 950,000 Bitcoin to customers awaiting payouts from its bankruptcy process. Of course, that's good news for creditors and customers who have been waiting for those reimbursements for years, but it could have a negative effect on price in the short term. What do you think the impact of that Bitcoin distribution could be? Uh, well, I, I think the distribution is going to be a little smaller than you you indicated. I think it's going to be more in the line of around 140,000 Bitcoin, which is still you know over $9 billion worth of Bitcoin. So still very significant. Um, but it's what's uncertain is exactly how much of that is going to be taken up because you know there are a lot of people who may have forgotten that they had any Bitcoin on Mt. Gox because they had small balances. People could have uh, passed away in the past 10 years and the, you know, their estates are unaware of it. Um, so it may be that it's only a, a percentage of that 140,000 Bitcoin that actually hits, uh, you know, is taken up in wallets. Um, and then the next question is, how many of those people are going to see that as a windfall that they want to cash in on? Um, a lot of these people who were buying Bitcoin back in 2010 to 2014 when Mt. Gox was operational, they were very early adopters, obviously, and Bitcoin enthusiasts. And many of those people will want to hold on to that Bitcoin because they still believe that there's a lot further to go. Uh, and then those that are in jurisdictions that have capital gains tax may see this as, you know, they've got this huge windfall, but they don't want to give up, you know, a 25 to 50 percent of that in capital gains. And so therefore, they'll uh, they'll hold on to that and maybe borrow against that to, uh, to monetize the, the value of that Bitcoin. So my, my view is I don't think that we're going to see, you know, 140,000 Bitcoin um, selling pressure into this marketplace. But even if we do, the one thing to think about, Talia, is that's $9 billion of Bitcoin in a market that trades 30 to $40 billion a day in Bitcoin. So it's a significant amount, but it's not going to all hit in one day and it can be absorbed over time. So while we're waiting for a possible dip in the short term, it seems like in the midterm to the long term, a rebound is coming. You remember what Fundstrat's Tom Lee said. Bitcoin's probably suffering from the Mt. Gox, you know, starting distributions in July. That was a huge overhang for many years. But if I was invested in crypto, knowing that one of the biggest overhangs is going to disappear in July. I think it's a reason to actually expect a pretty sharp rebound in the second half. So I think, you know, 150 is still within. God, it's already July 1st. So that's that's so you're not taking that off the table. That's still a possibility. That's right. The question is, do Tom Lee's peers and other industry insiders agree with Tom Lee's analysis? Watch John Glover react to Tom Lee's prediction. It's interesting he reacted this way. This week, Fundstrat's Tom Lee said that while the Mt. Gox bankruptcy is hanging over the crypto market, he expects a sharp rebound for the cryptocurrency in the second half of this year. Do you agree with him at all? What's your outlook and what's your timeline for Bitcoin to potentially hit those all-time highs we saw back in March once again? What would it take? So I, I, do, I am looking for a, a similar bounce in the second half. Um, I think the summer doldrums will continue until the fall, and then we see Bitcoin rally up to somewhere between eighty-five and one hundred thousand uh, dollar price point. Whereas I know some others are looking for a lot higher than that. Um, I just don't think that there's going to be enough impetus to to make that through, and I I don't think there's going to be enough traditional finance pressure to push that higher. So you know, my view is. I would accumulate Bitcoin down in the 50 to 60,000 range, looking for 85 to 100,000 later in the year. Of course, because of all this, because Bitcoin is close to ripping above a 15 year all time high, because Bitcoin is where it is in the cycle, many are now looking for altcoins for the biggest gains. 
institutions like Solana. Here, investor and founder Joe McCann says that he thinks an 8x in price is coming for Solana. Solana needs to be in your portfolio. Listen. Uh, if a spot ETF gets approved, there's an 8.9x potential increase in Solana's price, right? Again, you start talking to you know the Raul Pauls of the world who are big Solana bulls, have massive platforms with lots of people that are listening to him and his perspective. And you see things like GCR suggesting an 8.9x or VanX saying $3,300 a token. It's not that difficult to see a world where people end up getting exposure to this just on the speculative nature of how high this thing could actually go. So I have a big buy order set at 51K, 52K. Now I'm a believer that Bitcoin is going to be at a higher price by the end of the year. And by next year, it's gonna be at a higher price. So waiting for 51K, 52K may be a moot point. We're already pretty close, but I already have my HODL position. So I really wanna try and snipe it at a low if it gets there. Again, you tell me, what are you preparing for? Will you buy? Do you think it's going in the 40 range, the 50K range? What do you think? And really what I'm expecting is Bitcoin kind of continues to range. Once we see a breakout of this yellow line, then we can definitively say almost that, okay, the next level up is coming, but really we need a catalyst. So the big question is, what is the next catalyst of the cryptocurrency space? And I would say that the catalyst is this Ethereum ETF. It's going to either get approved this month or next month. And when it does, and when it gets going, that's again, going to really signal to the industry, especially as they start reporting the flows, Hey, this much inflowed on this day, this much inflowed on this day. Oh, now we had outflows just like the Bitcoin ETF. This will be the next catalyst. This is what's going to raise up all crypto prices, particularly once Bitcoin starts to show some strength. The ETH ETF uh, approval from the SEC, if that happens, then that will rise, uh, that will raise up all uh, crypto prices, um, just as the BTC ETF approval did. I think in general, it's going to it's going to raise prices across the board. Uh, obviously, ETH is going to be the main beneficiary of that. But I think that that's going to pull all the other kind of top cryptocurrencies. I, I wouldn't say you know, meme coins are definitely going to benefit, but the you know top five altcoins will likely benefit as well because speculation will be that they will be next in line for uh, for ether or sorry ETF approval. Um, so I think it's going to benefit the uh, the entire ecosystem. The question is, will these products, the altcoin ETFs, be as popular as the spot Bitcoin ETFs. Now, obviously there's two schools of thought. Some people say, no, these won't be as popular as Bitcoin ETFs. Still, some people say, actually, I think these might be more popular. I think in general, it's gonna, it's gonna raise prices across the board. Um, obviously ETH is gonna be the main beneficiary of that, but I think that that's gonna pull all the other kind of top cryptocurrencies. I, I wouldn't say, you know, meme coins are definitely going to benefit, but the you know top five altcoins will likely benefit as well because speculation will be that they will be next in line for uh, for ether or sorry ETF approval. Um, so I think it's going to benefit the uh, the entire ecosystem. Do you think these products will prove to be as popular as about Bitcoin ETFs? I think they I think they will. Um, you know, there's going to be an allocation that traditional investors and even you know. Uh, investment advisors are going to be uh, stating as as a, a normal policy or a normal portfolio approach. So it could be that people are going to allocate two to four percent of their portfolio to crypto assets, and the best way to express that, uh, certainly in a tax efficient manner and, and in a secure manner, is through the ETF. So I think that it's going to be uh, proved to be a very popular asset class across the board in in the U.S as we've seen in other countries like Canada and Australia who have them today. Hey, make sure you get your tickets to Bitcoin Nashville this month. Use code altcoin daily for 10% off. Hope to see you there. Hope to be hanging out with you. Guys, happy 4th of July. I know it's a slow day, but again, now is the time to double down, triple down on your cryptocurrency research and strategy. Bitcoin's going to pop back above all-time highs sooner rather than later, I think. You don't want to be caught off guard. You want to be watching it happen. You want to be fully prepared. So make sure you subscribe and see you tomorrow, my friends.